Now, my name is T.D. Madia from Team Eyewitness News. So, it's been over 24 hours since we finally understood what that alert was about from the EFF. The one that said an urgent media briefing was to be held at noon on Thursday. I predicted, like some others, that it would be about Floyd Shivambu. I said he'll be going to the MK party. Tick, tick. Those points are correct. I think the question marks still are on the why aspect. Would Floyd Chivambu be going to the MK party? Why would Floyd Chivambu be seen as part and parcel of Julius Malema, like they're joined at the hip? Why would he part ways with his long standing brother, friend, comrade to go a different path? I've seen the resignation letter. Here it is. It was published by the EFF after that media briefing where Nyeko Floyd Chivambu writes to Comrade President Julius Malema, CC's Marshal Dlamini and the Central Command team. And in it, ultimately, he says he doesn't want to renew his membership. He asks for permission not to do so. He then goes on to say, which is a really interesting bit for me, that my non-renewal of membership of the EFF is not a vote of no confidence in the organization, but a revolutionary act that will allow progressive forces to unite and work towards the agenda for progressive and revolutionary change. Note that particular view because I, I'm putting a star there, disagree with that view. The other interesting tidbit for me is where he writes, my sincere plea is that in its reflection of the decision I've taken, the organization should also avoid slander and mischaracterization of an otherwise revolutionary and disciplined decision to not renew the membership and the request to be released from other functions I am deployed to. So he's asking that they don't take pot shots at one another, that they are mature in the severing of ties between Floyd Chivambu and the EFF. I'll talk about both points a little bit later on. I watched the briefing. I mean, all of us think that we can read people's body languages. I want you to go back to what Julius Malema looked like uh, following the performance at the elections. And to have that happen, the re-emergence of VBS and have their names tied to it again, and then have this happen. I think it's several knocks having happened in succession, and you kind of see that taking a toll on somebody's body and his frame. He kind of shrunk, didn't he? I looked at that, it looked like he hadn't slept for most of the night. People are saying that it's an actor. I don't think Julius Malema is that good an actor. I am sorry. Because that's all Oscar award winning material that he put on if that was the case. I think it's a tectonic shift, not only for their relationship and their brotherhood, for their party, which is headed to an elective conference, for the country, I think, you know, because this was the political party that came out of nowhere 11 years ago, caught the imagination of the country, infused some energy, injected urgency in our politics, and we've kind of watched it slowly dwindling. But I do think that there are people who remain quite hopeful about what the EFF could be. I think that still is the case. It's not a write-off. It remains a relevant political party. It's the fourth largest in the country. There is obviously a thing about Julius Malema and Floyd Chivambu having come from the Youth League, walked that path from the Youth League. Julius Malema was expelled. Floyd Chivambu actually wasn't expelled from the ANC. He followed Julius Malema to a large degree remained under his shadow. There's a solid argument, and I think a legitimate one to be made, that they made for a phenomenal team. You don't have to like their politics. You don't have to approve of them. But you must be able to recognize what they've been able to do. I said they changed the political landscape. When I said they infused energy, blah, blah, all of that, that was a shift in the way our politics was done. And it was two of them on the basis of trying to destroy the former president, Jacob Zuma, who they felt had destroyed their careers in the ANC. I don't think that they would be who they are that powerful, that this, that that, that interesting, if they had remained in the ANC. So there is that about their, their paths and that they've worked together. VBS has been raised as a why. It doesn't work for me. I feel like VBS becomes the umbilical cord that continues to join the two, the pair. Because on one side, you've got Floyd and his brother, Brian. So Floyd's whatever the allegations are, they're tied to his brother. And if you did follow Danny Maverick's work, um, the card followed Julius Malema everywhere. And in answering that question, he also said, well, my cousin is like my brother and he follows me everywhere. So it also has tentacles that spread to his family. So I would never think that VBS would be 
the straw that broke the camel's back. I think there's other things. I think that they didn't see eye to eye on GNU. They managed it really well in the public eye, but they didn't agree about what is best. They are left on the outside. They're not even the main opposition in parliament. There are question marks around the approach to GNU and how they dealt with other parties. Um, is it also the straw? I'm not sure. There's an argument that it's a deployment based on what he said in the letter. I don't think it's a deployment. I think that even the media briefing itself, you must question what happened. I think that's managing the crisis, having a joint media briefing to make the announcement. I think Floyd was hauled before the country to explain that he's leaving to manage again the fallout. The, that part there about not wanting to slander and mischaracterize each other, I think that's the answer to why there was a media briefing. So I'm reiterating, I'm holding on to my stance that for me, it's not some strategic deployment. Will they find each other in the future? It's not impossible. Because I don't know if they'll contest each other, even as outsiders of one another in the political space. I can't pinpoint what conversation made this letter come to life. But I can say the party was headed to a conference. I think this was a preemptive strike, ultimately. It's got a lot to do with the third National People's Assembly. That's their third elective conference that's taking place in a few months' time. I think there's a decision one needs to make about whether you are humiliated at a conference or you leave in your own terms just before, while still holding your position, while still high. And I think that's the decision Floyd pretty much made, is he had been taking so many pot shots. If you speak to insiders about some of the things that are happening, there are multiple pot shots that we, the public, have seen, where he's the butt of so many jokes, where there's no respect. I think respect, right? Floyd's situation is actually not unique, that there's been a trend that leaders who are seen to have dissenting views are dealt with, they lose positions, they walk away. People will mention, where's Darlene Pofu now? Is he chairperson? No. People will say, where's Godrich Gadi? Is he still secretary? No. Where's Mandy Samashiro? I'm going somewhere with that. You get it? So there is a trend for people who, when they don't get their way in the EFF, they either leave or demoted, if you may. So that is a thing that people have picked up and are speaking about. He was in charge of KZN in the lead up to the elections. Yes, an MK argument can absolutely be made, but how do you explain the EFF's manifesto? I've covered so many EFF events that when I walked into the Moses Mabida Stadium, I knew that this is not EFF. It's not their standard. And I've been insulted for it. I don't, I don't actually care because that's the truth. It wasn't their standard. And that was on whose shoulders? Floyd. That ending there when Julius Malema says, you can thank Floyd, he did all of this. That was intentional. And so Floyd is that guy where quite often, as I said, a lot of pot shots were being sent his way. Um, your position as the second in command is not guaranteed. What do you do? Floyd also recognized in the MK party that there's a gap wide open. Magasela Mzobe, last month in July, left the EFF to go to the MK party. Part of what needs to be done in the MK party is to actually build structures that stand. You cannot have a political party, an organization really, that has the rate of turnover that you've been seeing in the MK party. So there is an opportunity for Floyd to get out of the shadow, to show himself, to show up, and show South Africa what he's capable of. How Floyd marries being a Fanonist, Bikoist, a Sankararist, a Pan-Africanist, right? A Marxist thinking person, then it's all of that. And marries that with the Umkonto as a party is interesting to me uh, because um, the MK party absolutely postures left, but it isn't a leftist party. I've made that argument so many times. Show me what progressive party wants increased influence by the monarch by traditional leaders. Show me what progressive party wants to take girls to exile on Robben Island because they've fallen pregnant. What progressive party wants conscription? So I just, I just, I look at it and I go, no, 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 no. That for me isn't that. And the idea of how Floyd marries who he is and what he stands for, what this will be interesting. Flip-flopping is often attributed to Julius Malema, but actually it was an EFF thing, right? Changing their minds back and forth and navigating how they change their minds. So I think Floyd Chimambo will have to go and do that. He's pinning his, ris his career, he's risking his career, pinning it on a former president, an 83-year-old former president, who no doubt has been the disruptor of the year, is a master strat strategist, as far as politics is concerned, will it pay off? I don't know. Some will argue that um, in order for this play to work, 
former President Jacob Zuma needs to be around five years from now for us to get to general elections in order to keep the Mkonto with Caesar party alive. But again, maybe the proof of Floyd Shavambu is what he's able to do to help build structures and build structures outside of a province like his and where it's done really well. Or there's a theory that he might actually be going to go take over KZN, that he that, that recognizes that there's a gap and he could work with whichever party, not even the EFF, it could be IFP, and they could actually recalibrate that entire system as we see it, that GNU or GP, Government of Provincial, GPU, <laughs> Government of Provincial Unity that's at play in KZN might actually be rattled by this. You don't know it, you might have Premier Floyd Shivambu soon. There are many, many theories that are circling, and I think they'll happen for a while. They'll be circulating for a while. Um, is it surprising that the EFF is not going to replace them? Of course not. They've got a conference, like literally a few months, like two, three months, they're having a conference. So it makes no sense. But there is a question right there of who the party replaces them with, because the confidence it needs to build also includes replacing Floyd Shavambu. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. Um, he's been in a shadow. He's been in a shadow for far too long. He's taken way too many pot shots. It'll be interesting to see a showdown of Floyd Shivambu versus Julius Malema. I think it'll make politics exciting. It'll make it, it'll make it exciting, I think. Um, he's got something to prove. The question of Julius Malema, I think people have spoken about whether or not he needs to do some sort of reflection. I think that he has moments when he does. I don't know if he's had enough time to do so now with so many hits that have been coming for the EFF, but he speaks about the moment and how it's a do or die one for the party. And I think he's correct. I think there's a lot of work to be done. He needs to rally his troops. He needs to help the EFF get over this threshold. There was already some sort of growing dissent quietly because there people are afraid, right? It's unlike other parties where you see democracy loudly at play when you engage with their supporters. I think he needs to manage that view even. I believe that we're in a political system where a Julius Malema and an EFF is very much still a necessity. The question mark for me is how do they move beyond this? Again, will they find themselves with a, with a MK that's got Floyd in it and work with them? I think they probably will end up working with them, but I don't think that's the strategy. I think Floyd wanted respect. It is a seminal moment, certainly one that should not involve the ANC. Um, but these, both these leaders actually, with their ties to the ANC, they remain very close to many leaders in the ANC. I say the ANC as an entity has more than enough problems of its own to deal with, to not get anywhere near whatever's happening in the EFF. Um, the Red Berets must figure themselves out. Maybe it is a question of self-reflection. I'm not sure. As I said, this piece, this puzzle piece, is going to take a while to shape up. I am not going to jump in so I know exactly what the cause is. But for me, this move? was definitely preemptive.